Hi, I'm Roxy Jasenko. I'm super excited to be here for the Women Who Lead series. I own Sweaty Betty PR, the Ministry of Talent and Social Union. I guess, um, you know, Sweaty Betty PR was born because I had a hunger to do things differently. You know, I was working in PR for Diesel, the jeans company, and everything was very much send a press release, send a pair of jeans and hope for the best. And I was like, there has to be a better way of doing this. You know, you need to be creative. You need to go out there and hustle. It can't be just send a press release and send a great pair of jeans. So one day I was feeling very ballsy at 24 and I started it. And to be honest with you, I mean, I can't believe it grew the way it did, but it grew because I was 24, I was young and hungry, I was ready to break the rules, in a legal way of course, <laughs> um, and I was willing to do things differently and take risk. You know, and my counterparts in the PR game at that time, back in 2004, weren't willing to do that. They were stuck in the send a press release and hope for the best. So people were really receptive. Media was receptive and clients were taking notice because they were like, who is this chick? Why is she so ballsy? Why are newspapers now writing about her as a PR company um, as well as her clients? So it grew like that, I guess. There's a lot of reward when you take risks, as you would know from a glam corner perspective. You know, when you went out there and poured your savings into starting the business and buying the, the, the product to rent, you know, you're taking a risk. It could have taken off, it might not have. But if you don't take the risk, you don't get the reward. I don't know that I'd say my job is exciting. I guess for me, the most rewarding is seeing my staff grow. You know, seeing a girl who's come to me as an intern, then begins as a junior publicist and then evolves to a senior publicist and can go and do new business meetings, for instance. For me, that's the rewarding and exciting part. Clients, we're very lucky. Our work has brought us clients without us going out and, you know, pitching. They've come to us by word of mouth, they've come to us by seeing our work. Um, I suppose for most people, excitement would be getting new clients. For us, it's seeing the, the team evolve. You know, you're going from having an office where you had a dining table as your, your desk and a fax machine and a phone because, well, people used fax machines then, to seeing, you know, a team of sort of 27 plus in a beautiful new office and, and watching them grow. You know, they're, they're not here for six months at a time, they're here for six years at a time. So that's for me the rewarding and the exciting part. You know, with every staff member I have, I've always said to them, treat it as your own. You know, and that's how I always worked. I was a florist, I worked at McDonald's, and then I started my business after I was working at Diesel. But every single place I worked, I treated the business as my own. And I think if you treat it as your own, um, and you take that ownership, it allows you to grow within the business. The opportunities continue to grow, and I think that's a big thing in our office. I think career highlight was getting through 2017 and 2016, you know, my, I was very lucky since the day I started in 2004, everything worked very well for me. Um, I was working seven days a week, I was getting new clients all the time. I had some issues with regards to non-paying clients, which if you don't understand the back end of your business, I learned very quickly you can be out of business. If your clients don't pay, you've got no, you've got no money in the bank. Um, but I guess 2016 and 17 was, getting through that was a highlight because I think a lot of people, I mean, we're talking, my husband went, to, went through a three week trial, he then went to jail. Um, two weeks after that I got cancer. You know what, I kept going. Um, and I think that for me is a highlight. It just shows how great a team I've got, that they, were, they backed me enough to make me keep going. Because most of the time I think that anyone else would have gone in a corner and cried and said this is too hard. I could have done that, but I didn't because I had such an amazing team and family and friends around me that I was like, right, business didn't, I guess, go like that but it definitely didn't go like that. It just sort of plateaued, but I kept it going. So that for me is a highlight. The fact I kept going. What is something that people don't know about me? Well, I think that is impossible. Uh, um, I guess I've always been an open book and it makes my mother cringe. She's like, Roxy, please will you shut up now? Um, I don't know, I've always called, you know, black is black, there is no gray area with me. If someone asks me a question, whether they be a friend or in the media or whoever they are, I'll always answer. Um, so there's not a lot people don't know. You know, I guess the only thing that I'll say that people don't know is that I actually find this quite hard. Whilst I come across as ultra confident, I guess my enthusiasm stems off being sort of um, uneasy with these kind of situations. I mean, you'll never find me at an event standing in there mingling, you'll find me at the door. Why? Because I'd rather be at the door with a clipboard like this than I would be actually in there trying to be the hostess with the most So I suppose that's the only thing that people don't know. That you know what, yes, you see this Roxy who is like very out there and over the top, but that I would say stems from 
a bit of an uneasiness of doing this. My mum finds the whole thing, you know, crazy. I was the world's worst student at school. I got like 60 out of 100 in my HSC. I didn't even get into uni. Um, but my biggest aim for my mum was to make sure that I, whatever I applied myself to, I did well because she gave me a good education even though I didn't use it or make the most of it. Um, in hindsight, now I wish I had it. Um, but at the same time, you know, she sort of looks and she goes, wow, I actually can't believe you've got the balls to do what you're doing on a daily basis.